Hey kid, welcome to Kid Time Storytime where we have a fable of Jumping Mouse, a Native American legend of friendship and sacrifice. <laughs> oh, hey, I know that lady. Uh, you know Jumping Mouse, White Rat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except, uh, well, we just called her Cousin Joelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's my cousin. She's always jumping over everything. Uh, White Rat. What? I'm pretty sure you're just making that up because you want to be part of the story. <sighs> Totally got me! Oh man! How did you know? Well, first of all, you're not a mouse, you're a rat. Oh! Got me! Yeah, it's hard to pull over one on you, storyteller. <laughs> okay, so this mouse, she is a dreamer, this one, and she wants to go to these legendary high places, but it's really hard to get there, to this legendary high place, because she's just a little mouse. <laughs> So, uh, just tell her to take the subway. Okay. White Rat, she's not a New York City rat. Oh. So there is no subway. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, what about the bus? No bus. <laughs> oh, what about the taxi? No taxi. Oh, man. <laughs> so, you know what? <clears throat> Look at the time. Uh, we better get to reading right now before we get another White Rat interruption. Also, I want to tell you something about this book. It's not going to look like any book you have ever seen on Kid Time Storytime before. Why, you ask, storyteller? Well, because the author is also a sculptor and she created ceramics. That's right, ceramics, like little, little figurines that you might see in your house, except she made every creature that you see in this book out of ceramics and then took pictures of them out in nature. So this book will look very different from any other you've seen before. Long, long ago, there was a mouse. She was a mouse like any other mouse, nose to the ground, running here and there, only seeing what was right in front of her, except for one difference. She had a dream. She had heard a story the old ones told about somewhere far away, the high places where life was good, and she dreamed of going there. Come with me, she said to the other mice. There's a better place for us. But they did not want a different life. So all alone, she went to find the high places. Right off the bat, we know she is very courageous because not only does it take a lot of courage to follow a dream, it takes even more courage if you're following the dream all alone. She scurried along until she came to this beautiful river. The water was running fast and looked deep and cool. That looks like a nice place to dip your feet. How would she get across though? She was so tiny. Then she heard a low raspy voice. Hello. Jumping in shock, the mouse looked around and saw a large frog ribbit sitting under a leaf. Hello, she responded, tilting her head in curiosity. Uh, who are you and where are you going? Asked the mysterious frog. I'm just a mouse like any other mouse, but I have a dream. I am going to the high places. They are beyond anything I can imagine, but I know I can get there. I am Grandfather Frog. I know of the high places and I'm touched by the eagerness of your heart. Your journey will be long and hard, but because of your great longing, I will give you a gift to help you. Close your eyes. Ooh, a gift to help. I wonder what it's going to be. The mouse squeezed her eyes shut and heard Grandfather Frog say, Jump! Jump as high as you can! The little mouse crouched down and jumped. As she did, she felt her legs grow longer and longer. Your new name is Jumping Mouse, for with these long legs you will cover much distance, cried Grandfather Frog. That is an awesome gift! Jumping Mouse opened her eyes to see her wonderful new long legs. She turned to thank the frog, but poof, he had disappeared. I wish I could have told him how grateful I am, for now I can surely cross the river, she said to herself, and bloom jumped right over the river. Mm-hmm, we're on our way. The wide grassy plains started on the other side of the river. Now 
now my journey has truly begun, thought Jumping Mouse. She hopped and hopped and hopped until, well, you know what happens after all that hopping. Of course, you get a little hot and tired, so she looked for a cool place to rest and noticed a massive mound in the middle of the grass. As she inched closer to shelter under its shade, it moved. It moved. It was a buffalo. A buffalo, of course. Look at the horns right there, right there. Well, Mouse, Jumping Mouse, sat very still because she was afraid that she would be stepped on. Timidly, she looked up and was surprised to see that the buffalo was crying. Oh, look at the tears right there. Brother Buffalo, why are you crying? Oh, no, a blue buffalo. I have lost my sight, said the huge buffalo. And without my eyes, I cannot tell which grasses are good and which will poison me. So... I will die. Oh no, this is a very sad story. Great pity filled jumping, house's, ha, jumping Mouse's heart as she rested her paw on Brother Buffalo. I am so sorry for your loss, but do not fear. My name is Jumping Mouse and your journey has not ended yet, for I will give you a gift. You will now be known as Eyes of a Mouse. Suddenly, boom. The buffalo could see, but the jumping mouse's surprise, the world had gone dark all around her as if twilight had fallen on a moonless night. For in giving the buffalo this new name, she had given him her own sight. That is an enormous sacrifice to give your sight for a friend to spare his life and a brand new friend. Wow, just like the frog gave her an important gift now she's done the same thing i wonder how she's gonna get to the high places now though jumping mouse could hear eyes of a mouse rumbling with joyous laughter as he rushed through the grasses in circles and she smiled wholeheartedly the buffalo explained i would like to thank you is there anything i can do for you oh i must cross the plains to go to the mountain where the high places are but I cannot see. Will you be my guide? So together they traveled across the plains until they reached the foot of a mountain. I am sorry, but this is as far as I can go, for this is the end of the plains and I was not made to travel up the mountain, said Eyes of a Mouse. I understand, said Jumping Mouse. I cannot see, but I can smell the crisp air of the mountain. I have hope I will find the high places. So saying goodbye to the buffalo, she went on. More courage. She's just going to smell her way to the high place? Okay, I'm rooting for this one. Jumping Mouse knew the mountain rose high before her. The sweet smell of grass was now replaced by the strong scent of pine and moss. Did you know that if you lose one sense, like the sense of sight, your other senses grow keener? like your hearing gets better, or your sense of smell gets better. These are real things, so that's what's happening to the mouse. Her, her smell, her sense of smell is sharper now because it has to sort of help fill in the information that her eyes would normally give her. So it's telling her there's pine trees and moss now and the climate is changing around her. Holding her dream close to her heart, she took a breath and started to climb. Feeling her way around tree roots and following the scent of the mountain breeze, she hopped and hopped and hopped until she was very hot and tired. Ooh, panting for breath, she felt a soft object with a large shadow where it was cool. And as she leaned up against it, ooh, it moved. What animal was it now? It was a wolf. Oh, no. Jumping Mouse sat very still because she was afraid that she would be eaten. In the silence, she could hear the wolf crying. Crawling closer to the sound, Jumping Mouse bravely asked, Sister Wolf, why are you crying? Oh, so brave. I have lost my sense of smell, said the wolf. Without my nose, I cannot hunt, so I will die. Jumping Mouse's fear was replaced with pity, and reaching out, she placed a comforting paw on Sister Wolf's face. I am so sorry for your loss, but do not fear. My name is Jumping Mouse, and your journey has not ended yet, for I can give you a gift. You will now be known 
as nose of a mouse. <gasps> you know what's about to happen, don't you? Suddenly, the wolf could smell all the things of the earth around her, but as Jumping Mouse suspected, she herself could no longer smell the crisp mountain air. She could not sense anything beyond her reach, for she had given the wolf not only a new name, but also her own sense of smell. Jumping Mouse could hear nose of a mouse's joyous howl at the return of her precious sense, and she lovingly smiled. Well, the path ahead may be more challenging now, but the joy she was able to give was worth it. Nose of a Mouse said, I would like to thank you for all such a wondrous gift. Is there anything I can do for you? I must climb the mountain to find the high places, and I cannot see or smell the way. Will you be my guide? So together, they climbed higher and higher up the mountain. Look at that, right on the back of the sister wolf together. Look at that sculpture. Isn't that beautiful? I bet she has these all around her house. The author, I mean, and the sculptor. How cool is this to be able to sculpt the pictures of your picture book? As they reached the tree line, Jumping Mouse could feel the crisp wind getting stronger. She could hear the soft scraping of nose of a mouse's claws as the dirt gave way to solid rock. See, the terrain was changing. She knew they were getting near the top. I am sorry, but this is as far as I can go, for this is the end of my territory and there is no cover or food for me above the tree line, said Nose of a Mouse. I understand, said Jumping Mouse. I cannot see and I cannot smell, but I have a dream. I will find the high places. So saying goodbye to the wolf, she went on. But whoa, the journey was now very, very hard. Poor Jumping Mouse could not see. She couldn't smell. She didn't know where she was and didn't know where to go. All the mountain rocks felt the same under her small paws and all she could do was hear the <laughs> of the wind. Slowly, she stopped hopping and sat very still. A little tear found its way down her cheek. She was so very lost. How would she find the high places now? This dream is getting harder and harder. Suddenly, oh, hey, hey, wait a minute. We know that guy, don't we? She heard a raspy croak. Jumping mouse, why are you crying? She knew that voice, it was Grandfather Frog. Hey, he's back. I have a dream to go to the high places, cried Jumping Mouse, but since I cannot see and cannot smell, I do not know where to go. Fear not, Jumping Mouse, for I will give you one more gift, said Grandfather Frog. Jump, jump now, as high as you can. So Jumping Mouse crouched down and she jumped. Higher and higher she went, and behind her she heard Grandfather Frog rumbling, Jumping Mouse, because you have selflessly given all that was special to you, I give you the gift of freedom and great sight. You will live in the high places. Open your eyes. Jumping Mouse opened her eyes and saw an endless blue sky, bright with sunlight. Her body felt weightless as she glided on the wind. Below, she saw the world spread out below her. There was no limit to where she could go. With great exhilaration, she soared higher and heard Grandfather Frog's voice echoing all around her. For I have named you Eagle. <sighs> Did you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm getting sentimental again. This happens sometimes with books. How beautiful. Do you see this incredible journey? This this beautiful little mouse had this dream and and she kept giving of herself to others without thinking about herself. That's what we call being selfless and giving to others. And then she was rewarded with this incredible gift where she got to, well, the high places, right? Doesn't get any higher a place than the sky itself, right? <laughs> well, I remember that I made a great sacrifice once. You did, white rat. I didn't know that you were a sacrificial kind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. One time I found a piece of pizza out on the subway. Uh-huh. And I let this other rat, gray rat, help me carry it downstairs to my lair. So I was very generous in helping him uh, share 
my uh, pizza load. Wait a minute. Did you let Grey Rat actually have some of your pizza? Uh, I don't seem to recall. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't think White Rat is quite the example of selflessness and giving, but Jumping Mouse, that is an example.